Um, it is really funny, free speech, the issue of free speech and freedom of speech. And I've been grappling with it, this a bit personally this week, to be honest, in my attitude on free speech. Um, it is an issue that covers so many areas of endeavour um, when you get down to it, and such an important issue. And I was surprised to see a release uh, this week from the Free Speech Union concerning a very bureaucratic thing, the eligibility criteria for becoming a principal or headmaster in the old pale stale male language, a headmaster at a New Zealand public school. Um, and bureaucrats, of course, to keep themselves at home on the Zoom meeting are constantly rewriting these things. Um, and then they call for public submissions, don't they? And that's what's happened with the eligibility criteria for being a school principal, which seems to have some very, very interesting stuff in it and seems to prescribe what Kiwi school principals should think about various issues which are indeed open for debate though not in our mainstream media. To explain more, we are joined by a, a friend of the programme, uh, Jonathan Ayling from the Free Speech Union. Uh, Jonathan, lovely to have you with us again. Good morning, Sean. Um, um, good morning. Oh, look, I may have just... I just didn't say, I may have made a terrible mistake. Was it Campbell Brewer I was talking about, not Campbell oh. Barry? That's that's me getting out of bed late. Yes, and Cameron, sorry, it Cameron did, Brewer. Did. Yeah, I did. I, I don't know what was up with me. Cameron Brewer, what my shout-out was to. That's a fail. All the lefties will be all over that. Uh, muck up, won't they? That's what I get for lying in. All right, Jonathan. Um, uh, so these criteria, one wouldn't think this was a controversial thing. Can you tell us what has got you guys involved in such a, minor, well, apparently minor issue? Oh, I, I'm uh, intrigued by that, Sean. I, I would not think that this is a minor issue at all. What we're seeing here is the uh, it, it, amendments being made to what uh, makes for a competent uh, principle, what the criteria list requires of them. And uh, additions to this criteria include things like uh, applicant shows commitments to being anti-racist. Applicant shows commitment to understanding the impact of colonization on education in Aotearoa. Application, uh, applicant uh, will include Matauranga Māori in learning practices. I think uh, what we see here is an ideological litmus test that has been put together to make sure that uh, certain perspectives are excluded from senior leadership in schools. And education is about being exposed to a wide variety of perspectives, learning the processes of thinking, not the content uh, exclusively. And so uh, we need actually people with uh, different ideological perspectives that can contribute to these things because these are very legitimate conversations. When we think about the uh, impact of colonialism on education, look, there, there are uh, many different perspectives on this. Uh, what does it mean to be anti-racist? This is an incredibly subjective concept. And so I would, I shudder at the thought that uh, we will now have the Ministry of Education setting the terms of what people have to think in order to become leaders yeah. in this. And story. what is the impact of colonisation on whatever? Do we know well, what it is or what the accepted view of that is? Do they tell you what the impact is? Or is that for you to figure out? Well, that, that's exactly what we're trying to figure out at the moment. We've, we've gone to the Ministry of Education. Uh, we've gone to the, uh, the Secretary of Education. And, and, and we're trying to exactly understand, well, what are you suggesting it is? Because I think there are quite a few different perspectives there. With regards to that, uh, that uh, question specifically, I would say... Probably it's a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, you know, New Zealand or, or, or Aotearoa uh, didn't have a, uh, a, a an education system at all prior to colonialism. So I would imagine there's some argument to be made that it's had a positive impact. I, uh, equally, uh, probably we have made mistakes along the way. So I'm not sure if there's just one answer to that. I mean, the requirements that you have to, um, you know, uh, have, have particular uh, regard for tikanga Māori and te reo Māori, uh, where you have to uh, include kaupapa Māori and that kind of thing, I go, well... Th 
there isn't just one perspective on what Kopapa Māori is. There isn't just one entity that is Tikanga Māori, and it's very easy for a principal to just be that. So now, basically, the these are the PC woke criteria for being a headmaster or a principal in New Zealand, right? I would say it is an ideological litmus test. This is saying this is what you've got to think. If you don't think these ways, jog on. And you've got to speak this way, so that's why it's a freedom of speech issue. But surely the public have been consulted on this and have had their say. Why surely, Sean? That hasn't happened in the slightest. But haven't, hasn't Pre- this gone out to public consultation, this document? How else have you got it? We've been invited to because we had a member... Uh, who is a principal. So principals were asked for their thoughts on it. The public hasn't had a say in the slightest. Uh, and, and the Ministry of Education specifically invited the Free Speech Union to provide a briefing document on this. Uh, the, the, the public has no voice in this process. Oh, OK. They haven't hidden this from the public, though, have they? Uh, i say that again. They haven't hidden this from the public, have they? Uh, well, what, what, what is hidden? Uh, had you heard about it before this? I don't know. Um, we we hadn't heard about it until um, a, a, a teacher and, and, and a former principal uh, raised this with us. So yeah. hidden, certainly not publicised. Yeah, OK. All right. Um, so what happens now? You've clearly... Have, have you approached the Ministry of Education and said, we think this is wrong? Absolutely. So when we uh, were first approached about this issue, we, we had a look at the criteria that was set out and we realised that, uh, Sean, free speech is not just about uh, what you get to say, obviously. You know yeah. that well. It's, it's also um, about what you don't have to say and what you get to hear other people say. And the Free Speech Union is also uh, very invested in the ideas of, of freedom of conscience and freedom of intellectual inquiry. And so this is why I, there's a lot of overlap between the work we do and, and our concerns about this criteria. So when we were first alerted to this, we contacted the Secretary of Education. We asked her to explain. Um, it won't surprise you. We didn't get a very thorough response, but we were invited to provide a right. submission. Right. And I... I um, you know, not 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 to set the tone. Hopefully, they read every word of our submission, are incredibly touched by it, and decide to change the criteria. Okay, uh, I I don't hold much hope, hope. for them. If people want to read the submission, where do they go? Uh, where do they go to find you guys? Um, on our on our website, fsu.nz under submissions. It's our most recent submission that's been FSU released. Fsu.nz or .co.nz. FSU.nz. .nz, okay, that's where to find it.